corporations can make their profit because they're vying with the unions for the distribution of money. Um, the average pay in the automotive industry because of unions, for example, come, and benefit package comes out to $56 an hour. I'm a professional land surveyor and I'm only worth uh, about $45 an hour. But these guys that can't even put an American car together in a, a good manner are worth more than I am as a, uh, as a professional. Uh, so we can see why nobody buys American cars. They cost too much. I like American cars. In fact, I bought one. It's called a Toyota. It was made in Austin, Texas. The truck I had before that was a Dodge, but it was made in Mexico. So sometimes we look at the label and we don't even look at where it was made and, and have the misconception that what we're dealing with is something that is uh, made in America when in fact it's not. But uh, to deal with the problem of division, and I believe a lot of the divisions instigated by the government, they would love to see us divided. So it, it doesn't take much, and I've found this out in working with some people, uh, two organizations that had some problems come between them, and it appears that the source of the problem was a person that was carrying a message from one organization back to the other organization and distorting it. And then he'd take the uh, message from the second organization back to the first organization and distort it and create a friction between the two organizations. And I wonder how often this division is created by people in government. So uh, one of uh, a, a different organization recently was talking about dealing with this problem. Now we did start something under the guise of the Committee of Safety called the Common Law Court where you could bring suit against somebody and it would be tried by a, a, a jury of peers. There's no punishment, nobody's going to be hung in the morning, nobody's going to be uh, at sunrise, nobody's going to be fined, but the verdict of the jury then is weighing the evidence with an unbiased view uh, because what we have is A calls B a son of a bitch, B calls A a bigger son of a bitch, and this pissing contest goes on. Now. A's followers support A, and B's followers support B, and everybody else is looking, and they don't know which side to believe. So the common law court that we established is to look at that and, and weigh the evidence. You prove that you, if you claim he's a government agent, you prove he's a government agent. If you say this about him, you've got to prove it. If you don't, the verdict is going to come back not guilty. Um, now, that's going a little further now in what we call the Patriot Unity Coalition. The Patriot Unity Coalition, everybody that joins it, agrees to put all differences, uh, past differences aside and to, to get along with each other in a common purpose. Uh, it's modeled uh, in se December 12, 1774, the Maryland uh, Provincial Congress that was uh, a result of the um, First Continental Congress resolved unanimously that it is recommended to the several colonies and provinces to enter into such or like resolutions for mutual defense and protection as are entered into by this province, as our opposition to the settled plan of the British administration to enslave America will be strengthened by the union of all ranks of men in this province, we do most earnestly recommend that all former differences about religion or politics and all private animosities and quarrels of every kind from henceforth cease and be forever buried in oblivion. And we entreat, we conjure every man by his duty to God, his country, and his posterity cordial, cordially to unite in defense of our common rights and liberties. So there back in 1774 they realized that division would be the hindrance of success in their uh, efforts to avoid enslavement of America. Now that's the basis for the political unity, co or Patriot Unity Coalition and the Committee of Safety Common Law Court. If we have differences, we've got to put them behind us. If they can't be resolved, we've got to find a, a, a level playing field for them to be disputed and a decision made. The committees of safety play a role in this as well. The uh, bylaws of the Arizona Committee of Safety uh, make provision that you don't say anything bad about any other member of the Committee of Safety. If you do, the uh, hearing can be held and judge the accuracy within the Committee of Safety of the allegations. If they're true, 
the person who is a bad guy can be removed. If they're false, the guy that made false accusations can be removed from the Committee of Safety. So these are means whereby we can avoid the division that's, that's split us so far apart. You talk about uh, you know your dealings with uh, 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 one organization uh, there in Arizona that you were removed from for that reason. That's uh, right. Somebody didn't like my website. Didn't like. Uh, didn't like uh, what I was. What I was talking about on my website. And that, you know, I, I frankly, you know, it with me. I said it's real simple. I don't care what religion you are. The Constitution protects you. You can worship any way you want. You don't have to belong to the Church of England, the Catholic Church, the the. Protestant, you don't have to belong to anything, you know. So if you want to beat your head against that wall over there, knock yourself out, man. If you want to get down on the dirt and stick your nose down on the ground, hey, I'll try to keep the Saint Bernard off of you, you know. Don't but bring me into if you it. Were, if you were to join the Patriot Unity Coalition and that other organization to uh, were to join the Patriot Unity Coalition, as long as nobody said anything nasty to each other, there would be no problem. If somebody did, it would be tried by the Patriot Unity, uh, hearing would be held by the Patriot Unity Coalition to determine and, and resolve the problem. The idea is we've got to get along. We can have differences of opinion, as you obviously had with them. Uh, that's right, but we've got to realize also that, uh, and, and that's freedom of speech, we can have differences. But we've also got to learn that we've got to work side by side if we want to achieve the common goal, which is restoration of constitutional government. You know, when I started the militia, it was the ADL, and, and when I worked with a presidential candidate, first Republican to sign up for the presidency in 1996, Charles Collins, I got attacked by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, and both of these organizations have come against me and tried to do and succeeded in, in screwing up million dollar deals. I mean, I've had my magazine sold, at least half of it, you know, for a value of about a million bucks. And, and it was on Thursday, and they put a press release out on Friday. On, on Monday, I walked in the office, the CEO's white and shaking and somebody's contacted every stockholder in a meeting. I, I moved to Tucson, I came to Tucson, I ended up here for a while, and uh, I go into, uh, I, I, I finish my book, Mystery Babylon, and I walk into a biker bar, and I'm kicked out of it because somebody told them I was selling the book to raise money for a snitch named Huevos. I mean, what what kind of, this this has to be some kind of organized, Harassment, you know. I mean, I've had people shot that were trying to help me here. We are. In, it, it, it really seems to me that we are in a, a full-scale war. And because I'm on the side of the Constitution, I'm considered to be one of the rebels now. And I've always argued that whole stance. We're not the rebels. I'm. I'm. I'm the most pro pro government guy you got out there. If it's a government of the Constitution, by the con by you know, of the people, for the people, by the people not for the bankers. And, and that's what it seems like. All the law enforcement is there to protect the bankers. Well, and the corporations and the unions. Well, the, the Thomas Jefferson said, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the corporations that spring up around it, the Archer Daniels, Midland, the, the Monsantos, the uh, whoever's, uh, whoever's making the atomic weapons that uh, we're just putting underground. Here, here, buy this and bury it, will you? Well, there's no doubt that all of them are, are bad guys. Uh, uh, you know, they look at the money, the amount of money the unions and the corporations, the large corporations have, and they keep that money in the bank. So yes, they're in bed. Uh, years ago, back in the 90s, when I started looking at who the bad guy is, there were a lot of the Zionists, the uh, uh, various organizations, and all this. And bottom line is. The bad guys are the money merchants. They're the people that make money off of money rather than make money off of good, honest uh, labor, yes. good, honest effort. So the money merchants is is my choice of definition of the bad guy. I agree with that 100 percent. And I've got the history of the Rothschilds. They've they've assassinated our president. Anytime somebody wants to do something good. 
for people that are assassinated or thrown out of the 13th floor of the Bethesda Naval Hospital. Do people have a hard time, does the average public have a hard time looking at that and, lo and understanding that that's what's happening? That the reason Kennedy was shot was because uh, of the $5 bill I carry around in my wallet? Says United States note. And but Gary, part of the problem we got is how do, how do you fight evil without becoming evil? I think the committees of safety is the way. I mean, I don't want I don't want to shoot nobody. I want to hang a few people, but only after the, you know a fair trial. You don't want to act like the government and just shoot them. No, I don't want to. I do don't that. either. That becomes that, that, if you do that, and and uh, this is the problem I got with a lot of these. People are like, well, we need to kill all the Jews, we need to kill all the blacks. No, that makes you as evil as the people we are opposing here. And, uh, I, by the way, I, I, I really like this idea of this Patriot Union, because when I started the Free American, I thought, look, I'm giving all of these people a, a way, a, a voice, a chance to say something. And I, I've run articles by you and by other people around the country, you know, by... That and, and worked with people when uh, we were in presidential candidacies, like uh, Dr. Eugene Schroeder, who organized the tractor uh, march on Washington years back. And uh, it, it really occurred to me too that uh, we're it, 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 our founding fathers were people just like you and I that uh, that saw a problem and and set out to fix it and do it in a way that's good for the people, as as, as opposed to being, you know. Here, here, here's a here's a billion dollars for taking that much money from all those people. Well, uh, Gene Schroeder, uh, you know, I, I talked to him back then and wrote an article called "Martial Law?" Question mark, which uh, explains the history and why the government has, uh, by enacting laws, has created a scenario whereby they can violate the Constitution. Since then, I've learned even more. And this has to do with the marijuana laws and a number of other laws that are enacted in this country in violation of the Constitution. If the United States government can find a, a country uh, that they want to sign a treaty with that, say, outlaws marijuana, they uh, assume this, uh, they sign that treaty, and then they assume that the treaty provision in the Constitution overrides the Constitution itself, and that's where the federal government extends its jurisdiction into the states to deal with the marijuana laws uh, because of a treaty, not in uh, in violation of the Constitution. Gary, yeah, they stole our uh, what popular mechanics referred to as a billion dollar crop. It was just gone. I mean, this is how uh, Randolph Hearst got that mansion on top of the the, the cliff there on the ocean. You know, they 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 stole a billion dollar crop, and now you can. There's ten thousand products made out of it, but you got to buy it from China. You got to buy the products from China. You got to, and, and the farmers here can't grow it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, puts money in the bankers' pocket. Now, look, look, when Henry Kissinger went to China and started smoothing the way for trade with China, he also set up a number of corporations that were. Uh, involved in in the importation from China. So almost everything that's bought through China goes through these corporations. They're the middleman that skims, and they don't have to skim very much when you consider the largest ship in the world, uh, privately owned ship in the world, is the Walmart ship that runs, can't even go through the Panama Canal. It runs from China uh, to uh, California and then back to China, probably empty, and then comes back uh, full of, of uh, cheap toys, things that break easily. Uh, but officials in government invested in these uh, trade corporations and have become extremely wealthy off this trade with China. So why should they oppose it when they're the beneficiaries of the profit of that trade with China? And that profit with the trade with China, a lot of it to some degree is created as a consequence of uh, the fact that they have supported the unions that made the, uh, the, the prices so high that there's no... Uh, uh, that the, 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 the it shifts that profit to their corporations. Yeah, I came up with a plan for something called Liberty Villages, and I I, I like to bring this up in a, in every show because for eight years I've been I've been telling people to become a little bit more self-sufficient. If you can grow your own food and generate your own power, 
what do you need the banks or the government for? And I actually think that might have been one of the reasons, since I had Liberty Villages in a centerfold in the magazine, it might have been one of the motivations for trying to take me out in 2004. Well, and the cities are always going to have to have centralized sources of power uh, oh. until some efficient method comes up with. And, you know, public utilities are a necessity, sewage and water and things like that. Well, but I don't, I don't, I don't suggest that anybody we, that we try to cut away from those. I suggest that we put our own solar, make our own solar, put our own windmills up on our roofs, and generate a certain amount of our power from there. And also, you know, the magnetic motors. We know they work. They're just not allowed to uh, to uh, be in this country. Yeah, uh, I want to say for the. The listeners, uh, if you're interested in Patriot Unity Coalition, the uh, Committee of Safety Common Law Court, a uh, means of resolving disputes with other people in the Patriot community, um, or committees of safety in general, uh, www.committee.org, uh, right on the page you'll find links to all of this information. And we've got that linked up on uh, the Free American site. You know, now, the uh, I know you don't uh, agree totally with uh, Dr. Edwin Vieira, but he 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 says in a, in something that I just uh, a paragraph I put in one of my stories here that the militia, indistinguishably, are independent and superior to all political party parties, factions, and special interest groups because the Constitution explicitly recognizes their unique position and authority which no political party enjoys because they encompass every able-bodied adult citizen which no political party can, can claim and because every one of their members must fulfill a personal, personal com constitutional duty to preserve the security of a free state. Now, the, the man that's, that took over the New Mexico militia uh, when I got a little too busy, his name was Jim Strode, is Jim Strode, and uh, he he's taken over and formed the American Constitutional Militia Network. And I I published uh, some of his uh, his statements. He says, uh, you know, he says that uh, America, well, everything he says here, it's linked in my story or the, my latest article, but. Uh, Everything he says here I agree with. We support the Constitution of the United States of America. Could this Committees of Safety be uh, 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 a marriage of the, uh, of the militia and, and, and the whole patriot movement? My God, we all ought to be working together. We've got to get rid of the 